Premier Green Wings, these bans are going to be interesting because there's no way to ban out both teams completely. So what do you focus on? Of course you take that LeBlanc away from Faker, taking the Lulu and Zareth away from GBM. A pretty obvious uh, response as well, too. So it looks like the mid lane going to be the primary focus for SK Telecom. Yeah, it, it just don't give him Rumble. that flex pick. And Rumble, of course, Marin's longtime staple top laner. But are they going to give up the Maokai? Well, I wonder if... if we had Maokai, Sejuani, Rek'Sai open Is for Marin. What would SKT take? Right, and Lissandra too. Both that of too? these teams, both top laners and both mid laners are very good at Lissandra. So yeah. that's a big contested pick in this matchup. Well, we know somebody is going to get a power pick here. I yes. mean, both of these teams are going to have access to multiple power to picks just because they have so many. And there's a Callista ban against Pilot. Okay. Still a major ban here in Korea, the Maokai ban. I think that's smart. You can deal with these junglers, but dealing with Marin's Maokai has proved to be nearly impossible for pretty much anybody. And Faker's been playing a lot of mid lane Urgot in solo queue. Also mid lane Vladimir as of late. So they may go ahead and take this pick. And wow, first pick Urgot. <laughs> so Rek'Sai and Lissandra should be for Jyn Air. Yep. That's what it'll be. And you gotta wonder, sometimes SKT is a bit too bold with those uh, early mid lane picks if it does indeed go to the mid lane. Was that maybe a misstep to give away uh, Lissandra and Rek'Sai to Jyn'Air? So Urgot and Taken and maybe Sejuani as well. So going for one of these very powerful tank compositions that have been in vogue recently. Sejuani obviously a strong pick and a, a good champion for Bengi, but I want to see a 5.5 Nunu out of Bengi. I want to see what he can do with this <laughs> champion with the, with the changes to the jungle enchantments, the new Cinderhulk edition. Could be quite fun having a little chat with Marin right there. Yeah. He's deciding which pick he wants up in the top side. Yeah, the ult for Sejuani is just so good though. Hard not to go with it. They will lock that in, but a little bit more decision making being done. Oh, the Hecarim taken for Marin, okay. Interesting. That's been a more of a fallback pick for him when that Maokai isn't available, but I mean, they've done a good job of dealing with Marin's champion pool right here, taking the, out the Rumble and Maokai and Picks and Bans and taking Lissandra in the first round of the draft. So now it'll be Annie and Corky. Yeah. All right, well, Tom's not playing this one, so we're not going to see an Udyr. We did see, all right, we're going to see another uh, support Alistar, it looks like. Yeah, such a huge front line, and, and Jyn'Air yeah. has to be really worried that they're go not going to be able to deal enough damage no. in the late game. kidding. One of the reasons why Jyn'Air lost against GE was they over-prioritized AP damage, and that made it easy to itemize against, and I think they're going to end up in the same boat here, Della, I, I think so, too. Who? Anivia. Whoa, Anivia locked in, Faker and that's going to be Anivia. Faker on Anivia. What is this? Yeah, I, I feel the same way, GBM. I don't know what's going on, man. <laughs> GBM's like, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> How in the world are you going to pick someone that's going to make this Jyn'Air team do enough but damage see, in the late game? The thing about this is that Anivia Wall, if they use the Urgot, can be used really effectively. The Urgot ult just yep. to cut people off and collapse on someone nearly instantly. Well, we knew we were going to see some pretty surprising stuff here, but I did not expect the Anivia. I, I got to say, that's a bit of a surprise for me. It was played in the LPL by WE Ninja earlier this season, but to not great effect. And are we going so. to see a trundle to deal with some of this tankiness? I think that would be getting, a bad choice it's at all. It's getting wild. Remember that Trace practices Rek'Sai in the top lane. Yeah. So they always have that as a flex pick on Jyn Air. But trundle... One of those champions we haven't seen in a while, and it's going to be locked in. All right, oh, this is. game's already delivering, though. Oh, wow, yeah. And you'd have to imagine it's going to be a jungle trundle, like you were saying. It could be in top lane. Yes, yeah, we'll it's, it's going to be a top lane trundle. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, uh, hoping to just kind of trade out right there. And we are going to see the 80, and wow, this is... Ah, this meta is so awesome. Oh, I'm I glad know. we're seeing this. I love 5.5. It's going to be even better when 5.6 and 7 come in and the bard buffs happen. Yeah, Bard. League's in a really good place right now. Maybe it a is. little bit too tanky. A little adjustment there might uh, open up some more aggressive picks and really balance this out. But yeah. it certainly has changed the meta game a ton, and it's fantastic. Yeah, so here we go. Faker on Anivia in game number one. This series is going to be incredible. Trace bringing the trundle to that top lane. It's going to be insane. Team Tank 
versus team, we're yeah, going to try really hard to kill tanks. It's going to be really difficult for SK Telecom. Do they have the damage to finish this one out? Trace may have to go for a Blade of the Ruined King because Anivia's passive too. Who do you kill on SKT? Yeah, exactly. Who do you, who can you kill? I think the, the Corky pick is a mistake here. Well, that, that's the thing, is that the least tanky person has, you know, a passive that basically gives them an extra life if they're protected well enough. And I don't know. We're going to see what happens, guys. Well, it's going to be crazy, but I think Jin Air is in a little bit of trouble. I think SKT won the pick man, at least. Yeah, as long as they can take it late. So Jin Air, we'll see what they can do early. That's right. Here we go, guys. SKT versus Jin Air, game one. Here we go. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. SK Telecom versus Jin Air. Ignite on Anivia, too. Yeah, Flash Ignite. Well, this is Faker we're talking about, and I have some good news for you, Monty. I have some great news. You know what it is? Bang is using giant enemy crab got. Ah, yes, finally. Yes. Bang is the chosen one who knows which skin to select. He is, and a Policeman Trundle. Kind of fun. Kind of a little bit awkward. Right, so. Okay, so yeah, we will see what happens here. Yeah, Trundle pick, <laughs> kind of a natural counter when we move into some of these more uh, oh, we got tanky that ward. metas. Yeah, got the ward with the bite. Yeah, a little bit of gold for Trace as well. And this is going to be Faker's first professional Anivia game. Wow. And there is the glory of giant enemy crowd guy. <laughs> Isn't he a beauty? Been waiting so long for this skin, though. Huh? Yep, that's right. He's one of the few champions that can uh, twerk from the front. <laughs> <laughs> that stomach. That's uh, it's a really... Like, like Gragas? Yeah, yeah, one of the few. The few, the proud. <laughs> the front twerkers. That's right. <laughs> I'm sure everyone's glad I pointed that out. You're welcome. So for once, Cloud Templar gets to cast a game where Trundle is not selected, just highlighted and not selected. That's true, and uh, the difference is that this Trundle was picked intentionally. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Trundle was buffed in 5.5, so he does have that more safe healing in the laning phase. Mm -hmm. Ooh, but first to pause, the suspense Ooh. builds. Exciting. A lot, a lot of ignites on SKT, two in fact, Marin and Faker. Both the solo lanes with that ignite. Yeah, very, very interesting. But yeah, I really think that Janair has to make some good plays early on in this game because SK Telecom really is rock solid in terms of how they're going to be able to control the late game with all these tanks. Yeah. The number of revives that they have. We may see Faker just go ahead and build Rod of Ages for tankiness purely to outlast the opposition. I think that would be a very smart move. And Nivea already does a really good amount of damage. Anyway, so a little bit of tankiness certainly wouldn't hurt. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait to see the team fights in this game. You know, I, I like the Trundle pick against Hecarim too, because you know that yeah. Hecarim is going to be playing very aggressively, and with those those buffs to Trundle, he really does really does help out his sustain in the laning phase. Well, Trundle is just going to have so many good targets in the late game too. Pretty much anybody, he's going to be able to benefit right. from uh, ulting on them. So. And the other thing, yeah. too, is you have to remember that um, Trundle really suffers if you don't have strong primary engage. But with Lissandra and Annie and the secondary engage coming in from Rek'Sai, he should be able to get into the mix and not I be kited do. out. The big weakness is this Corky. You know, is this Corky going to get to be in a position where he's going to be able to do any damage? And I think there's a big question mark about that one because, you know, once this game hits 25, 30 minutes, unless Jyn Air has a pretty sizable lead, I think that Corky is going to be pretty... Pretty marginalized. Yeah, could be, could be a bit dicey. Yep. So. Might have to go for a quicker IE and uh, last whisper this game. Sacrifice a little bit of safety. I don't know. Maybe perhaps. I think you just go for for blade here. Yeah. If you you may have to run double blade onto Trundle and just hope that his ultimate provides you the tankiness that you're going to need to survive. Hmm. But uh, split pushing blade Trundle is very strong. It'd be uh, it provides some pretty quick uh, objective control as well too. Looks like we've got a bit of a 
hefty paws on our hands. GBM going for the peppermint bow tie today, it looks like. <laughs> yep. They should make a special uh, generic Green Wings jersey for him that doesn't have the fake tie on it, you know? <laughs> and we're back. Okay. Re-entering the game again. Yeah, that percent health damage that Subjugate does, too, is very useful. So, Trundle, all eyes are on him this game. Che harassing there at the blue buff, and it will be that lane swap. Probably smart pre-6, especially for Jyn Air. Get up to level 6, where, you're, where you'll be able to match poke for poke with that Urgot. Uh, with the Corky. You know, I suppose you do have very good wave clear as well from uh, Faker. Able to hold things a little bit against the push that Jynair is going to want to try in the mid game. I'm very curious as to what his build is going to be. If he's going to go yeah. more for a tier here and uh, perhaps be a little bit more vulnerable early in this game. And where are the flashy plays going to be, you know? Because Anivia isn't exactly the champion you see with, like, really active, flashy plays. But if anyone can do it, it's going to be Faker. Oh, boy. Very, very interesting. Yeah. It's funny to have so many of these ice champions in one game. Anivia, Sejuani, yep. Sahandra, Trundle. <laughs> Just missing Ash, I guess, right? <laughs> I think that's the only one left. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, almost Team Freljord. Team Freljord. Well, between the two teams, at least. That's right. It's the Freljord patch. Freljord reunion. A little bit late. We're kind of into the Shirima stuff now, huh? Well, the meta lags behind a little bit. Soon it'll be all Shirima champions. It's true. It's true. Rek'Sai's already here, so we're moving yeah. that direction. Oh, uh, well, this is interesting. If they keep going down... Yeah. Uh oh. Okay. Uh, well, they're gonna see Bengi. They see each other, and yeah, they're just gonna wall. Uh oh. But Janair trying to collapse on this one right now. A little bit of damage done, but nobody coming from the bottom, so they can't quite catch SK Telecom. Yeah, they had the speed try, unfortunately, for them to make sure that they could get out of that in one piece. Janair not wanting to invest any flashes into an early catch. Maybe they should have actually when Maybe. they saw them ward that brush, but. At the very least, Che and Chaser are going to get some deep boards in as a result. Well, and, Faker uh, has to take the long way back to lane, and so that will cost him a bit of XP. Actually, no, he catches a wave, so he's okay. Yeah, he lost really anything right there. It was yeah. a very good roam attempt. Not bad. Early on to this one, it will provide GBM a bit of a breathing room to go ahead and back right here. See, Faker's just playing this as a tribute to the, the OGN mascot bird in our theme song this season. <laughs> Bird is a word. It is. Okay, well. well it's going to be a passive start. Obviously, a team with a bunch of tanks and a Nivea. Yeah, think and about, a team that needs to build up to that poke. The thing about Trundle is one of the more interesting buffs he received in 5.5 was the buff to the range of his passive. So now, even if he gets poked out, of course, he will get some of that health back from just minions dying that he would normally get experience from as well. Right. So he he has some sustain against this Urgot, which is quite interesting, actually. I just want to know what's going through GBM's mind right now, you know? I don't think he was expecting this. Looks like Janair's going to go for an early dragon. It's and, a really uh, good timing. So GBM yeah. gets back into lane after the recall. They see Faker go after pushing the wave, and so they're going to get this uncontested. That could be big against a team that is uh, really tanky. Later on in the game, already having that first dragon for the damage boost is going to be very nice. There you go. So first dragon taken by Jyn Air already. That was, a, that was a very good window for them to take it. And look at this. We do see Hecarim in lane now. He went back, picked up some items, will be going for that Glacial Shroud and the Frozen Heart first, looks like, instead of going for Trinity Force. This is curious because now if Trace goes for an early blade, He's going to have split push advantage against Hecarim. And Hecarim, one of those champions that really thrives in that split push. Oh, and Trey still action. no items, and he's still able to do this to Mara and even trade. Yeah. He's going to have a lot more gold when he goes back as well. I mean, Mara, you know, if he does go with some tankiness before the Trinity Force, you know, it's just kind of SKT saying, yeah, we are just going to become ridiculously tanky as fast as possible. Right, but they are going to, that means they have to find 5v5 fights or 5v4 fights. Right. I'm very, very curious how Trace is going to itemize because it's, it's going to affect the outcome of this game. So we'll be tier first for Faker. 
And okay. it'll be two tiers actually on SK Telecom. So they're gonna have a little bit of a weaker early game in terms of their itemization and then that hard power spike later on. Yeah. Well, we'll see if Janair can take advantage of this. You know, it's all about getting Pilot, I suppose, up to that power spike as fast as he can, so he can do a bit of siege, huh? Yeah, and uh, maybe hitting Trum Trundle into that blade and going for a 4-1. Yeah. I think this is a good strategy to use against Janair, though, as we see this gank coming in. No. Uh, Marin could be in a bit of trouble here. There's the flash. They're going to try to slow him down a little bit. Chaser comes in for the knockup. Nice pillar. Marin, is he going to get out? Not without a flash. He's not in first blood. Goes to Trace. That is a great start if you're going to split push with that trundle. Great flash from Trace right there to go yeah. ahead and get the slow on the chomp. And he's already winning that lane very hard right now. This is where you can really snowball that edge into split pushing. I really hope he goes for a more split push oriented build so they can continue to punish this build that's coming out of Hecarim. Of course, we know that you usually use Hecarim as a. Re uh, yep, he's going Tiamat. Okay, yep. really nice stuff. I'm very happy that he's decided to do this as he trace with the flash chomp right there. Chaser gets up underneath him. There's wow. the pillar to block him off. Great synergy. Totally locked Chaser up. had to use the flash to get around right there, but does end up being worth it. Two flashes down now. Marin saved his ignite, so there is possibility of some reciprocity in terms of ganking right here, but Trace is going to be pushing super hard, and that's one thing that Trace does really well, is that he chips towers. If we talk about Jyn Air as a team, they're a team that loves to play with a lot of lane pressure and slowly grind down your towers for a big advantage. Very slowly. Yeah, very slowly, but of course with Morgana as well, the outer ring in the laning phase, and we've seen many Jyn Air games that kind of go where we, we have all three of those outers falling in favor of Jyn'Air at approximately at the same time just due to cross-map pressure. And Trace also knows when to back away, knows when it's not safe. And that was a lot of the early success he had in top lane Morgana was uh, a result of his ability to take those turrets. GBM also getting some nice damage down. Oh, yeah. Chaser, thinking about coming in. Are they going to dive this? No, not no. quite. They just, just want the zoning. tower. Jyn'Air's trying to snowball their advantage yep. right now. This is very smart. Even Look Che all showing the damage. up. Really good play from Jyn'Air. They're actually going to get this. Wow, one minion left, and that's enough. So, first dragon, first blood, first turret. What a start for Jyn Air. This is Benky exactly threw his what they ult need. Right there. I don't. Oh, did he? I don't know why. Uh, oh, he didn't you're... really have much backup right there. He didn't even land it properly. Just got a slowdown instead. So, pretty awkward, actually. Ultimate coming in there. Didn't save the tower or do much of anything. Now he's just hurt his odds at making a successful gank. Yep, not going to really help anybody with that. And now up in the top lane, Bang and Wolf getting pushed back by Pilot and Jay. Yeah, Faker had no chance. Faker went tier catalyst. He doesn't have a chance really to help out with what's going on right there. Do you think that's a little bit too slow? It's a little bit too much uh, building up and not enough damage right I mean, now? Anivia becomes such a pain in the ass in the late game. And Will they get there? Yeah, that's... But you're, you're facing Jyn Air. You're, if you're SKT, you know Jyn Air doesn't like to push as aggressively as they should, so this is, I think, them attempting to abuse Jyn Air's weaknesses or their pa more passive play right now. Well, it's gonna... coming up to the top side. All right, let's watch this. Oh, and Bengi took the blue buff, oh, too. Oh, whoops. Man. This is not going well. It's going to delay the tier stacking. Yeah. Oh, Flash stun onto Bang, and he's in big trouble. Flash is away. Looks like he might make it. No, he's not going to. Pilot with a kill. Oh, man, Jyn Air getting everything they want in this early game. GBM also has that lane pushed up without the tower, so he was on the roam just to back up in case they needed it. They had yep. the good wards in the enemy jungle. Know that there wasn't any chance of responding, and Jyn Air... It's going to be another turret, too. ...doing really well against these two tiers. Hardly any damage, and there's that outer ring just getting chopped down. The, lo the bottom turret is really, really low right now. This is going to mean a faster Trinity Force as well, considering that two towers already down in 11 minutes, feeding Pilot a little bit extra gold right there. So yeah. great start from Jyn Air. Now, we did see them have a great start against the GE Tigers as well, and get a little bit lost when it came to uh, dealing the killing blow at around 20 minutes into the game. So that's what we're going to be looking for right now is how well and how aggressively Jyn Air can play this out. You know, it was also a GE Tigers as well, too, that has an uncanny ability to come back in games if they really want to. And while SKT is really good, you know, do they have that potential as well? They're going to try to make a pick onto Jyn Air here. Nope. The ward comes over, though. Actually, they had vision all along, so wasn't going to work. Yeah. They 
scatter SK Telecom, though, with the Prey Seeker. They can push up mid really quickly with this Tiamat and the Lissandra. So they may just go for the Tier 2 and more deep wards instead. But SK Telecom not making a very aggressive play right now onto the Dragon. They look a little bit nervous. Marnie's going to take a bunch of poke damage. Oh, he's going to yes, get ulted. He is. He's going to have to ult away himself. Gets ulted by GBM, but he's going to escape. More damage onto this Tier 2 turret now. Dragon is up, and we'll see if uh, Jin Air can rotate over and take it. And Anivia really the only good wave clear on this team, too. So as long as they play where Faker isn't, they may be able to continue to get towers. You see Trace already back up in the top side. Has that TP available if he needs it. He's not going to be too great in team fights with the relatively low amount of tankiness he already has inside of that ninja tabby. So he does have to be a bit careful. Yep. Well, the duos move down to the bot lane. Trace just taking a little bit of jungle farm. Why not? But that split push has begun. And he's even got Ninja Tabby too, so Hecarim's not going to be doing a lot. Oh, finds Hecarim in the jungle. Oh, Marin, he actually got stuck. Oh, man, look at the damage. Trace goes ahead and ults, but he can't quite finish him off. Wow, but he will force him back right there. And yep. that means that Jinner may be able just to go for it. Oh, actually, Chaser, Chaser's going to finish it. Up. The damage from Rek'Sai isn't no, enough. No, he canceled his auto. Oh, man, Chaser he didn't had get it, it. And he canceled oh. his auto. Whoops. Oh, that's a heartbreaker. It's a lucky break for Marin, though. SKT, they need these lucky breaks right now. Well, they're going to lose the turret either way. Uh, well, they're going to lose a lot of damage on it. SKT also going to get the dragon as oh, a result okay. of that gank. They really needed to kill Marin right there. Yeah. Here's a TP. They're going to try and fight. Yep, that's right. Jay comes in. He's going to drop the tippers right in the middle of the fight. Pilot has to be very careful, but position reverser. Bang going to die right afterwards. He had to use it on Jay. So Dragon taken by SKT. Marin but TP'd they lose for that. I don't know about that one. Yeah, he's uh, pretty deep behind enemy lines Here comes right now, Chaser. too. Going to take some damage going to the turret. He's going to ult over the wall, but right into Chaser. There's a knockup. Chaser back for a little revenge. I don't think he's going to check his autos this time. Trace trying to catch up, and Pilot is going to be able to add on some damage as well. Misses with the first rocket. Second one, not <laughs> even needed. Chaser, there we go. That time he autoed him. Oh, well, they did end up getting him in the end. Marin, I think, just over committing right there. You don't have to TP uh, when you already pick up the dragon. Don't give him any more of an advantage. You're trying to just last this one out right here. Everybody else was pretty much able to get out except for Bang. Jay only hits one, actually, with the Timber. It's a bit of a misplay right there. There we go, the suppression coming in. But Bang dies immediately. He's just not tanky yet. They can't stop that. and. Then they realize that there is a Hecarim right there. They have two sides already locked up, so good choice for the Void Rush from Chaser to cut off any possible exit that Marin could have made. Marin uses his ult once again, and then gets knocked up, slowed with the Chilling Smite, and eventually taken down right here. No escape. Meanwhile, still actually going down to the bottom lane. Yeah, Wolf might be in a little bit of trouble. There's a stun from the Annie W. Wolf so tanky, though, with that Alistar ultimate popped, you know. I, I gotta say, Pilot played that dragon fight out really well too. Came up, did some damage, backed off so that the only uh, Urgot ultimate target ended up being Che, which did like nothing for him. <laughs> so Pilot actually played that very safely too. He's 2-0-1, has that Trinity Force very quickly. Yeah, Ravenous Hydra now done for Trace also. He's gonna take the red buff too. Oh man, Trace is just going nuts this game. No kidding. Sacrificing actually a lot of CS for that, but he's already in the lead. He really just wants to punish Marin repeatedly. He is about to find Marin in the top lane. Yep, Marin backing off immediately, though. According to the minimap, Pilot lurking wow, this in the is, brush. This is a nightmare for Marin. It can't really get much worse at this point. Uh, Rek'Sai is able to be there in a heartbeat with that Void Rush in order to help him out. GBM is very strong oh, at the moment. Oh, here we go. Big engage coming in from SKT. They've locked up Pilot a little bit. Che trying to get the stuns off Pilot. Very low, and he's still alive. He's still alive. He's going to live, and Che picks up the kill onto Bengi. How in the world did Corky make it through that? They might still, no, they're not even going to lose the turret. Chaser and Che able to stick around. Yeah, they had wow. that stun loaded up again, and just not enough damage quite yet. I will have to go back and see how that one started. Well, uh, by the time we had gotten down there, a lot of summoners had already been burned. But They tried to engage mostly with the Sejuani ultimate, it looked like. And bang. And Trace here, how do you stop this? You have to send Faker right now. GBM also coming down. They want the kill. Marn showing on the ward. Faker behind. Trace has to run. Yep. Can he get out? 
He's going to slow down Marin just a little bit. Still has that ult available. Sauce Pillar as well. I don't know if he knows Faker's there quite he yet. Does he does with the ward. Yeah, that's true. Fear coming in. Marin using that onslaught of shadows. And look at the moves from Trace. He is agile for a big troll. But here comes Bengi. Flashes wow. it. Flashes out of the knockup. Wow. Trace with the huge plays to escape. And the stone cold expression <laughs> on his face says, uh, I have never wow. seen Trace <laughs> smile, Doa. I've never seen his face move. <laughs> But man, he can move in-game. Well, Faker with the rod now, so they're waiting for Faker to stack up. What can he do? They're already down 4K gold. Yes, they have the late-game advantage, but Jin Air is really putting the screws to them in this game. No kidding. Well, Jin Air just playing this out absolutely beautiful. The Trundle last pick has been fantastic. Who knew Trace was this amazing Trundle player as well, <laughs> too, right? Well, I really like the way they played this out strategically as well, Jin Air. Yeah. Um, you know, in a very bizarre draft, they seem to know exactly what they need to do in this situation that probably they haven't been in before. Yep. Tremor Sense helping Jynair spot the members of SKT in the jungle, so the pick potential is not that great for SK Telecom right now. Jynair goes back. He's going to start building Frozen Heart now. Yep. Trace will be able to pick that one up. In a bit. Still a whole long time. This is a really early setup by both teams onto the Dragon. But. The yeah. You know, the funny thing is GBM really hasn't had to do a whole lot this game. He's kind of been farming. He's He's been around just in case, but you can see he really hasn't been a part of any of the fights yet. Oh, they're going to try to go into Chaser here. Look at that vision coverage from Jin Air already, though. Yeah. Nearly complete control around the pit. Marin is going to recall now. TP will be up in time for this dragon for both teams, but they keep having to deal with Trace's pressure as he gets scarier and scarier up in the top side. No real way for Marin to do him, duel, duel him, or do him, I guess. I, yeah, <laughs> no, no real way to do anything related to anything with him. Uh, there's the Frozen Heart completed. So Marin went Shroud, Phage, Frozen Heart, and is now building into Trinity Force Pilot. Huge take right now, wow. right as this dragon's about to spawn. Three turrets to zero. Dragon up in 30, and Faker, if there was ever a time he needed to carry, it was now. He needs to build up a bit more damage, though, before he's going to be a big threat. I mean, GBM already with that Abyssal Scepter is going to help out his team quite a bit. Yeah, especially with that Porky Poke, so. Yeah. Chase had a great game on Annie as well, too. His stuns have been fantastic. Pilot actually going for a uh, second item QSS after he finishes his boots, just wanting to be very safe, which I think is smart. They're going to need him to do as much damage as he can. And while this is going to slow him down a little bit, they need him to be able to stay alive right now. Well, it's also like, you know, there, he's the only, if we look at Jin Air, how many targets are there for an Urgot ult? You really don't want anybody except Pilot in the middle of your team. Yeah. SKT, good wall. Going for this dragon. You have to get the knockup on the pilot. Got a little bit too close there. That was dangerous. Pilot having to back away. They're going to give this. No, There's they're not going to give the dragon. Teleport coming in for Trace. Dragon taken by SK Telecom. And can they turn it around? Whoa, nice. There's one the ultimate. Trace, a little bit locked down. Taking a lot of damage. Great wall from Faker. They're going to get the knockup as well. Trace is going to go down. Good catch by SKT after getting that dragon. So SK Telecom able to make a little bit of a comeback with that second dragon now. Pilot got really chunked out because he was too far in front of the team and cut off with the wall right there. And SK Telecom really abused that fact, even though he had the QSS. Uh, for the Sejuani ult, he didn't do much poke in that fight, so SK Telecom winning the poke wars. And at that point, Trace probably should have just kept trying to split push in the top side instead of coming down into that fight. Yeah. That's a great wall. Nothing they can do in order to stop it right here. So Pilot goes down to about a quarter HP. Now the TP comes in, but this is not a fight that they really want. Great stun onto Chaser. And then the follow-up ult, also very good. Another wall will come in onto Trace. And Jynair a little bit uncoordinated right there, not knowing how or when they wanted to engage. And they are they really pay for it. Yeah. They certainly did. They still have a 4,000 gold lead, but that's going to dwindle pretty quickly if they can't kind of get a hold of things. Yeah, it looks like it will be Blade second from Pilot, but he's really delayed his build with this QSS. Yeah. If he hadn't used in the last fight, though, he'd be dead. Yes, that is true. Did came, it did come in handy. But he needs damage as yeah. everybody gets increasingly tanky as... 
Faker's got his Archangel uh, staff done now as well, too. So the damage is starting to build for this Anivia. Right. And at a certain point, is Anivia also going to build Frozen Heart? That's a very real question right now. Uh, as that Seraph's Embrace finishes, you get that CDR. It's a great item to have on Anivia. Of course, the mana helping out combos nicely with your Seraphs. So. Yep. And considering that if you if you just have enough HP, you're going to be able to survive Lissandra Burst. Yeah, that's a big question. You know, is GBM going to do any meaningful damage in the later parts of the game? It's a real question for Jinair right now. Well, they have to play around Faker. If they can push down turrets with this rather lackluster wave clear from the rest of SKT, that's how they do well. Trace taking another red buff. Bengi smites it, though. Oh, Bengi stealing that one away. Yeah, good ward. Good yep. warding. Bengi knowing how many people were on the bottom side right here. Yep. Marin's actually going to get a turret right now for not even a red buff. He'll get it. And Trace is going to try to pick up a kill here. There's the slow. Gets the cone down. Marin turning back around. He's just fine dueling this, I guess. Nobody else around for either team right now. I think Marin has got to be very careful. He can, al he can always ult away. He actually doesn't need to do it. Force the ult. It's a low cooldown ultimate, though. Yeah. Force the ult without using his own. Yeah. But he does have to back off. Of course, that sustain, especially with the Hydra. Oh, Trace oh is here coming. he comes. Where's the cone? There it is. Traps him. And Marin, he's going to have to use his ult to get out of this one, I think. Oh, maybe not. Okay. Yeah, should get enough speed. That's a Trace really, isn't done yet. That's oh, a really go. good delay, though, just to get vision in. Yeah. Takes out the pink ward, which is pretty helpful. SK Telecom, though, they're preventing this lead from getting any bigger by taking out some of these, or one of these outer turrets right now, and that was a good play. Well, the fight of Dragon really kind of helped stop the hemorrhaging. Getting that second Dragon as well, too, is very big for SKT. Yeah, Jenner really needed that Dragon, actually, to yeah. finish this game faster. I'm, I, I think Jenner. Should be starting to get a little bit nervous in this one. Well, especially because we're moving into the point in the game where Jinair has traditionally been the weakest as well, too. You know, kind of between 25 and 35 minutes. That's when things have been a little bit dicey from time to time. And uh, given the composition for them, this is not the time they can afford to have any sort of bad plays happen. Blue buff for Faker, and he will not get it again. Wow, Bengi. Bengi, Bengi, Bengi. That's... It's really not good. Faker still doesn't have that Seraphs. Uh, Faker really could use that. Oh, trying to flash away out of this one. Engage out of nowhere. Well, dangerous moment for Faker. They get the flash. Yeah, he really does need to watch himself. Yeah, he does. On Especially that side now. of the map. He cancels his recall just to help take out a ward there as it was swept out. But that's still really Jyn Air's side of the jungle. They have a lot of members on that bottom side. They're going to try and make a play on a Bang. Yep, that's right. Bang could be in a little bit of trouble here. Uses his shield. Jay comes in for the Sun Position Reverser to get Bang a little bit farther away. But the Tibbers waited. And now Jin Air on the run as Wolf comes in as well. Pilot a little bit unsure about what he's supposed to be doing here. Back away, GBM hit with Bengi's ultimate on Sejuani. And can he get away? Onslaught of Shadows coming in. They lock up Pilot in the back lines. He pops that QSS. GBM does go down. And Jin Air has to retreat. Dragon up in less than a minute as well to a dangerous moment. Again for Jin Air, they may have to give up this bottom turret. They might be trading a tier two for it though. Yeah, it looks like Trace will get that one at least. Yeah, Trace continuing split pushing right there and actually Chase should not have dropped Tibbers. After the position reverser was used, uh, Bang's just not gonna take any meaningful damage as if you think about Tibbers versus say a W or something like that. So why not just hold on to the Tibbers just in case you need it later on uh, on that retreat. I think that was a bit of a misplay with the Annie. You know, I think he thought Pilot, I mean Pilot was coming in. I think he thought if he got it, they'd be able to engage. Didn't really understand that there were so many SKT players nearby. And it cost him. And GBM did get caught out. Yep. Yes, he did. With Bengi's ultimate, Bengi landing a nice one there. Now Seraph's embrace completed. Faker will be going for Leandri's, it appears. I have to imagine. He's doing just, he's looking at doing just very consistent damage over the course of the team fight and having that big time Anivia tankiness as well. Makes sense. So this is SKT. Their job is to drag out team fights as long as possible, survive the burst, and then just deal very consistent but relatively low. DPS. Yeah, I really wonder how Jin Air is going to be able to engage on this team from now on. It's 
Not going to be easy. Dragon being taken by SKT. It's going to get low. Fight in the top lane, but I think SKT is going to be able to get this third dragon. They do. That's three to one now. So SK Telecom really doing a good job of playing this comp out exactly how it's intended. They've stayed just barely safe enough. Or have they? Huge stun over the wall. Faker in a lot of trouble. Goes down. Pops that passive anyway. Wolf pushing Pilot back out. Uses the QSS. They get the kill on Faker anyway. Here comes Bengi to try to break up the fight a bit. GBM has to disengage, has to use that Zonius. Wolf trying to get there for big pulverize. He gets it. Big knockup now onto Jin Air. Chaser, they're trying to turn it around. Pilot still with a good amount of health. And Bang pops that shield. But Kenny Kai well enough. Oh, nearly stuck. There's another knockup coming in from Rek'Sai. Oh, Marin Mark just runs Pilot in. over. Oh, man. Jin Air still chasing people. Flash over the wall. Looks like, whoa, wow, he knocks him back into the mid lane. Oh, but they're not done yet, I wow. guess. This is the longest team fight in history. Chaser comes in. They're going to get one more kill. So Can in the they end, get the it is two no! Nearly the ace on SKT. Wow. Trace somehow ends that with <laughs> almost full HP, just what? sustaining himself over the course of that action. Now they're going to get a tower. So a bit of a nice catch there from Jin Air yeah. getting into that choke. And Bang wasn't there at the start of the team fight. So Jin Air does take... Pretty good team fight win, but they don't increase their gold score really as a result. And there's that big wave that only Che is going to be getting at the top side. GBM finally getting down there right now. Yep. Wow, this game is really, really wild. It certainly is. But they got the necessary burst onto Faker that time. Yep. Well, that can happen. I mean, when it comes down to it, once, once Faker is down, there's not a lot of damage coming out of SK Telecom. I mean, we're a mana done now for Bang, so maybe that'll change. They do take the mid lane turret. Oh, they trap Pilot. That QSS, the QSS. That QSS is coming so handy for him this game. He's used it every fight, and it's saved his life nearly every time. Uh, arguably, though, he should be a little bit more careful right there. He wasn't going to save that turret. So at the end of the day, we have a nearly oh. even trade. Chaser. Thinking about trying to come in from behind, but will they find an angle here? Pilot had to go back. Uh, now. Critically, Trace has TP advantage, so they want to make a play now. Yep. But that's why Marin's coming up back into the fight. He knows that Jin Air is looking for an opening. Yeah, Faker joining them as well in the mid lane. Good warding, though, for Jin Air. They pretty much know where everyone on SKT is. And nobody's really going to be stopping Trace in the split push too easily. He's just going to go and hit the turret. <laughs> and can Marin do anything to stop this? Oh, Tracer. Or Trace, rather, accidentally doing a bit of damage to Mar and drawing the aggro of that turret. Oh, Wall nearly catches Chaser. SKT has set up some nice pick attempts this game, but yeah, Pilot has been using that scrying orb to All find used. pretty much every one. Marin this is hilarious. getting chased away. Yeah. Trace is really fast as well on that frozen domain. So, again, uh, continue trading with Marin even when Marin is trying to use his Q. Yep, that's such a fast cooldown ultimate on Trundle as well. He's going to have it up all the time. He does. Oh, wow. Recall. Baron attempt they by SK Telecom. With, they should see them with uh, Tremor Sense. Yeah, this seems a bit bold. Okay, they will back it away. It was a good try. They have the tankiness that it doesn't really matter if they go ahead and poke in there. They're not going to take too much damage from it, so yeah. maybe you get it. You're not going to commit without the teleport, uh, w or with a teleport disadvantage, no, 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 too. No, no, no. So SKT just kind of testing the waters there. But SKT's in a really good place now. I yeah, feel they like they, they've dodged the Jin Air danger zone. Now they have a chance to really use this tankiness and this late game power to close this one out. Baron's like, did you see that team comp that just tried to kill me? <laughs> what? What's going on? I saw an Anivia. Back in season two now, though, it's happened. We're not even in Europe. <laughs> All we need is like six black cleavers and a dozen warmogs, and we're there. Now, yeah, this Leandri's build, really interesting for Faker. But those three dragons, very worrisome for Jin Air. Yeah. They really needed to play around those dragons a little bit more actively and see if they could take them. But it's hard against this level of tankiness and also against Anivia, who can. Play and choke so well with that Arctic Storm. Yeah, I mean, Jin Air really just needs to find these amazing folks. <laughs> oh, this is happening again, huh? Battle over the Rift Scuttler. Bengi's going to come down and be able to take that one. SKT getting that crucial Rift Scuttler. Yeah. For Baron, or Dragon, rather. Still no good engage from Che. He doesn't have a Righteous Glory completed. So. Yeah, he does have flash up though, so for the next fight he'll be able to get in there. In theory, wow, Trace has some 
some attack speed there. <laughs> yeah, Trace, let me go to Randuin's or Warmog's next. Hmm. Bit curious as to what his decision's going to be. Pilot actually delayed his Blade of the Ruined King to get a last whisper due to the massive amount of armor on SK Telecom, but Makes sense. Pilot is, is going to have some issues doing damage. He needs to get that blade as fast as he possibly can. Yeah. Well, I think he knew going into this he was going to have issues doing damage either way. Yeah, I really think Corky was the wrong pick. And if anything, that's probably going to be Jyn Air's undoing. If they had a more auto-attacking AD carry, Marin actually got both crabs. It's really nice. Wow. Uh, if they had... They have an, if they had a more late game oriented AD carry, I think they really could have done something against this composition, especially since they were they lane swapped anyway, so you didn't really have to worry about so much of the early game. Yep. Oh, well, they forced the Valkyrie out of pilot. Dragon up in one second. It's coming up now. And SKT in a good position to try to take this. They've got pretty much all the vision they want. And Jyn Air with Really not much at all, so this looks like it could be an easy fourth dragon. Dragon goes down so Jyn fast to that Arctic Storm. That's right, they'll take it. Jyn Air with no opportunity to come in and stop this. So now, on that crucial fourth dragon, SK Telecom suddenly a big, big threat objective-wise. And now they can get into really dicey situations where they can trade dragon in favor of Baron. This is really dangerous for Jyn Air. Another game where Jyn Air really blasts out of the gates and then falters down the stretch. And yep. part of that's just due to the team compositions that they've selected. Uh, again, against GE, they didn't have the, the team comp to really hang in the late game. And I think we're in a similar position here. Yeah, SKT definitely did win in picks and bans. And I mean, the Corky's not doing damage. Uh -huh. Oh, they're going to try it. All right. Pilot has done as much as he could this game. All right, they're going to try the Baron, but here comes SK Telecom, the teleport coming in. Bang already doing damage. Nice Sejuani ultimate. They lock up Chaser and Trace. Trace pretty tanky, though. Position reverser used on him, I guess. And they're going to try to lock them up. Nice oh, Nivea wall. GBM goes in the back. He gets ulted. He's still in trouble. Zonia's avoids a stun from Faker, but Faker untouched. They're going to get ganked by Mom anyway. And now Chaser, just not able to do enough. Trace having to back away. Pilot locked in, tossed in the middle of the team. Oh, Valkyrie, not enough. And SK Telecom stops the Baron, and they are going to stop the Jyn Air team cold as well. And Bang, just so close to dying right there, but they couldn't quite finish him off. Now yeah. SKT will be able to get that Baron. Chaser took so much damage before that team fight even started. They didn't turn quick enough. SKT's evened up the gold, and here they come. They're going to get the Baron. Yeah, it should be pretty easy to take that. Oh, they're going to try. Very fast. Here comes a... Wow, they're actually going to try this. He teleported. He came in to try it. Rek'Sai comes in. If they can steal it, it'll be huge. Going in. Baron getting low. Knocked out. Can't do it. It's going to go to SKT. And now Trace in big trouble. Wolf. Might get killed on the outside. Position reverser used again, and Trace gonna try to escape here. So Jyn Air got the kill onto the support, but they I mean, at least they got SKT. one. At least they got one right there. Yeah, they did prevent one member from getting the Baron buff, but it's probably the least important member that to have it. So not ideal. SKT is in a pretty good spot. Yeah, let's take a look at this one again. So Pilot on the outside does Valk out, but still gets hit. Uses the QSS immediately in order to keep dealing some damage. Trace gets the Kai. GBM, really risky for him to go in right here, knowing that that Anivia wall was coming. He still ults himself, but he ults himself during exhaust, so he does virtually no damage uh, with that frozen tomb. Trace tries to get on his way out. Everybody all over Pilot. Now watch Wolf. Uh, Alistair play right here, gets that flash pulverize <laughs> or to punt Pilot back into the middle of the team fight. Really nice play from Alistair. And Jyn Air committed a little too hard, but... Whoa, ult onto Chaser as he uh, uses his... Oh, they're going to keep chasing him. Faker gets a stun onto him. All right, where's the wall? This game. Uh, only when it was Zonia. Chaser in big, big trouble. He's going to go down. Faker picks up the kill there. Bank position reverser onto Trace. They're going to lock him up again. Great stun. Man, the combos leading into the stuns from Faker have been insane. Uh, SKT just kind of going off at this point. There's a turret, the tier two in mid, knocked down by Marin. And SKT looks like they're wanting to end this one pretty soon. Yeah, I think Jyn Air, they've had these really strong performances against SKT and GE early, but they have to figure out some team comps that will actually wow. serve them a bit better in the late game. You got the inhibitor turret too, and it looks like the it's mid inhibitor is in big with trouble. Baron, so. Yep. 
And that is going to be at least one inhibitor going down. Nope, going to be two. And SKT just in prime position to finish this one off. Don't need to right now. You can just pull back, play it a bit safe. Maybe wait for that fifth dragon or uh, push up the top lane a little bit while you do it. But yeah, Jin Air. I think that, well, like we've been saying all game long, the Corky pick just is not doing enough damage. Well, you know, to be fair to them, uh, they've who done expected, they can. Who expected this Adivia pick? This is a right. little bit of an oddball composition coming in from SKT. And uh, they had already taken the Lissandra by the time that the Anivia pick went down. So they had to figure out how to jimmy it into this composition. And taking the Trundle last turned out to be pretty smart, actually. Well, yeah, Jenner did. They did everything they could. You know, Pilot, look at his scoreline. He's 3, 2, and 4. He's really, I think, played a pretty good game yeah. overall. And he, they also picked Corky before they knew about Anivia and Alistair. Yeah. And where this additional tankiness would be coming into play, and his poke would be relatively meaningless. But I think this is one of the reasons. We talked about this in the pregame. Pilot has played. This is his 13th game on either Ezreal or Corky. He plays these spellcasting ADs. Can he play auto ADs that do better in these situations? He may need to. Trace perhaps in a bit of trouble here as Wolf and Faker coming in. Oh, he missed a Q finally. Oh, I guess so, yeah. It happens to the best of us, I suppose. And there's the all Trace locked up. Another knockup takes so much to take him down, but they'll get it. Kill for Bengi this time. Bengi's been very solid on that uh, Sejuani, aside from when it's time to hand off the blue buff to Faker. <laughs> <laughs> He's kind of failed every time with that one. Underestimating the Bami Cinder and the Flail of the Northern Winds, I suppose. So. Taking it with a little bit of that AoE. Yep. Well. Anivia, <laughs> so Anivia now finally getting a needlessly large rod for the first time in this game. Look at Faker too, he's 2-1-6 one, with 414 CS in 39 minutes. His CS has just not missed a beat all game long. Really incredible stuff. Wolf gonna get a Frozen Heart too, because why not? Yeah, why not, man? No, man, it's gonna be Frozen Gauntlet. Just wait, just needs to pick up the Sheen after they take this fifth Dragon now. Now you can't auto after you headbutt anymore, so <laughs> no more sheens for Alistair. Oh, I suppose you're right, yeah. That is true. It's for the pulverize. It's after the knockup, man. And there we go. Dragon number five, SKT. Suffering from an early game deficit, but really holding their composure and rolling to this win. Yeah, 821 AP. Yeah, this has been such Anibia. a good game, though. Oh, yeah, this has been a great game. Two interesting compositions. Good play on both sides, but. SK Telecom just coming out a little bit ahead when things are all said and done. Yeah, we're learning a lot about the meta here. I don't think, I think, I don't think Corky's so great anymore, Doa. I agree, which is fine. I've never been a big fan of watching Corky anyway. Doa confirmed Corky hater. Yeah, kind of a boring AD. He has a pretty lame plane too. Floats like one foot above the ground. The definition of a lane plane. Well, Pilot has Blade, yep. but his build also, I think, cost him. Uh, he did need that QSS, it's true. He did use it well, but he also played a little bit too far forward in order to have to use that QSS in the first place at times. Well, objectives are going to, going to die very, very quickly. This is Jenner's last chance. They need to win a massive team fight here if they want to have any chance, and I don't think that's going to happen. The damage is just not there, even if the engage will be. SK Telecom just bullying their way into the base to end it here. Jenner, this is their last chance. GBM immediately evaporated. Got an ult going out. They're going to take down Che as well, too. Onslaught of Shadows across the team. Jenner scattered and Faker a bit low. I think his passive has only popped like once this game. Trace still so tanky. And Pilot, to his credit, staying alive until right then. So Jenner doing everything they can. But in the end, it is not enough. And SK Telecom with Urgot AD. Faker on Anivia mid, ends the game as, as an egg, GG. Wow. No, I didn't expect to see that? that tonight, Doha. Me neither. But it sure was fun. Glad we saw it. All right, well, how is Jenner going to adapt in game two right here to the rather surprising composition pulled out by SK Telecom? Again, Jenner against these top tier opponents. Go, comes in strong, but falters down the stretch. I think they really need to consider the damage of their team compositions. Man, Trace was so good early on. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is that 
we saw Jin Air lose, but there were several members on that team that played so well. Trace had a great game on... Pilot uh, played well on Corky. Yeah, it's Pilot just that he too. couldn't do anything after a certain point when the tankiness got there. So yeah. really have to think about reprioritizing right now and making some adjustments throughout this best of three. I don't think we're going to see a lot of Anivia here, but in that composition, it was a perfect pick, and Faker played it great, of course. I really liked his build, too. Yeah.